Managing users in Active Directory is pretty straightforward. If we want to create a user, for instance, just going to use the new AD user commandlet. And at its simplest, all you need to do is give this user a name. So here we go, we'll make a new user called Anthony Howell. And we got no output, so that means it was successful. We can verify that using the get AD user commandlet and specifying the name of the user that we want to get. There you can see we've got our user created, and it just has uh, the default values for most of its properties based on that name we gave it. Uh, but of course, we can create a, a more complex user. So here you can see a list of example settings uh, that we can set for a user. So I'm making a user called Douglas Engelbart. I got to give a name, surname, name, display name, uh, the same account name if you want to use a period instead of space there, reason principal name, email address, title, department, country, and manager, as well as the password. Uh, you can see here that I'm just converting a secure password one exclamation point to a secure string using it as a password. And so I'm going to splat that all to the new engineer splat and create it with new AD user. So again, no output, that means it was good. And so we'll use the get AD user command to verify that was created again. But what I do is I want to select all the properties that we just created. So here, 35, I'm creating a string array of all of those properties and then passing them to the properties parameter of get AD user. So get AD user. Uh, you saw with Anthony Howell, it returned just a, a default set of properties. If we use the properties parameter like we've got here, we can specify all the properties that we want. And then I'm also piping that to select object to only display certain properties. Uh, so there you can see, we've got a new user with all of those uh, settings that we gave it. And speaking of getting users, there's a lot of things that the get user command that can do. For instance, the filter parameter is really powerful. And so the first example I've got of using the filter parameters is giving it an asterisk. And that's going to give us all the users we have in Active Directory. So you can see it's not a lot. You know, it's just our, our demo environment. And so in, in bigger environments, of course, we return more users. But, but that filter parameter is a lot more powerful than just getting all of our users. Uh, we can filter by attributes. So here on line 51, I'm filtering for all users that have a department equal to IT. And then, of course, using the properties parameter again to specify that property and then piping it to format table and just listing the name and the department. So we can see here in all of our Active Directory, we only have four users that are in our IT department. And of course, we're not limited to just a department. We can filter by a lot of different attributes. Uh, so for instance, here I'm looking for all folks that have a title that's like manager. And you can see I've got the star in front of manager. That'll look for any users that have the title attribute that ends with manager. But let me show you. So you can see that we've got uh, membership test and end user. One of them is the membership manager. The other one is the happiness manager. So they all end with manager. Uh, but the filter parameter, again, it's really powerful. We can filter by more than one attribute. And we can also store it in a variable, for instance. So here, line 57, creating a filter for the department equal to IT and a manager that is equal to a Bertram. And then assigning that to the filter variable. And so if we actually, we can actually look at that variable too. And you can see that variable is, is exactly what we passed it. And here line 58, I'll use that filter in the filter parameter. And then also I'm retrieving the department and the manager properties using the properties parameter, just so we can, we can look at them. And of course, piping the format table to make the output look nice. And so we can see out of all the folks in IT, three of them have a manager of a Bertram. And we can also get users by OU as well. And so here's line 62, I've got an OU path. I'm gonna assign that to the OU path variable. Uh, but get user has a very specific parameter called search base, which is where it will search for users. So I'm passing that the full distinguished name of the OU that I'm using. And then filtering, you can see I'm just leaving it a filter asterisk. That'll get all users that are in that OU. And so you can see we've got quite a few users in that OU. But of course we can use more complicated filters. We can use as complicated filters as we want with that search base as well. So we'll, we'll use that same OU. We'll use the same filter from before. And so if we scroll up, just to remind you, that filter is looking for uh, folks with the department of IT and a manager equal to a Bertram. And then I'm also getting the department and the manager properties so that we can, of course, look at those properties to make sure that that filter actually worked the way we thought it was going to. And then, of course, piping it to format table to make it look nice. So we run that line. Well, you see, we've only got one user that is in the department of IT has a manager of a Bertram and is also in that OU. So get ID user, it's really, really powerful. There's a lot you can do with that, with the filter and the search base. And then setting attributes on users, we use the set ID user commandlet. And on a lot of them, there's a named parameter for that attribute. So, so I'm gonna look at the Anthony Howell user 
I'm gonna look at the title and department and then format that output nicely. And we can see that neither title or department have a value right now. And set AD user has named parameters for title and department. And so I can just use set AD user, specify the name of my user, and then tell it what I want the title to be and I want the, what I want the department to be. And then if we run that get AD user command again, we can see that those were set. There's a lot of other attributes that have named parameters in this AD user command. In fact, most of them do. But for the ones that don't, there's a slightly different process we can use to set those parameters. If we look at, for instance, the Anthony Hall user again, we're gonna look at the IP phone property and you can see that it doesn't even show up because it doesn't have a value. And some properties are like that. And so if we assign the output of get AD user to the user variable, and then uh, set that property on that variable to be the value we want it to be. So user.ip phone and then my IP phone extension. So in the state user commandlet, we have the instance parameter and that will take a user object and apply any changes that it sees to that user. So if we run this and then we look again at Anthony Howell looking at that IP phone property, we can see that it now has a value there that value that we set as a matter of fact, which is of course what we wanted. And so the last step for managing users is of course removing them. So this is really easy. There's a remove AD user commandlet. And so if we look at this GPO test user, for example, I'm gonna take a wild stab at it and say that GPO test is probably a test user. Uh, actually, I know that it is. You don't wanna remove users that you aren't sure if they need to be removed. And so we just use a remove AD user commandlet and specify the name of the user we want to remove. and in this case, I'm also using the confirm false flag. Uh, that's just so that it doesn't prompt me. So for instance, let me show you what I mean. If I run this without the confirm false, it prompts me. Are you sure you want to remove this? And that's good for removing users from Active Directory. You want to be sure that you're sure. And so I'm just going to say, no, I'm not sure. And then if I use the confirm false, and then we can actually see if that user is still there. It is because we said, no, we're not sure. So if I use the confirm false flag and remove that user, it will of course remove it. So error in this case, is good because we didn't want the user to still be there. Thanks for watching.